Hello and welcome to another episode of the Thought Leadership Podcast and Live Show. And today we are going to talk about YouTube. And I'm so excited because I have Salma Jaffrey with me here. And I'm going to give you just a small, small background story just to know you how far back in time we go. When I wrote my book 2018, I was researching videos and I was looking at Salma's videos online and how to create video content. I was when I work on my chapter and I came across her work. And two years later, she invited me to speak on our Facebook group. And she has been my YouTube queen, YouTube star for the last three years. And I cannot wait for you to hear and listen to you. So please welcome Salma to this episode. Welcome Salma. To, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you so much, Daria, for having me on. I am super excited for the topic and to be here with you as well. Thanks. Oh, wonderful. So just to give you a bit of a background. So I already showed you that she's my YouTube queen. When I think about someone, you know, when I have to ask someone myself uh, about YouTube, how to use YouTube, I go to Salma, I go and, and check out what she's working on because she is a special on this. She's been doing it for many years and she's a YouTube certified video marketing strategist. So she's really you know, deep down into knowing the best trends, what's going on right now. She knows exactly how to work it for the entrepreneurs. And what I love about it is that she's so good at explaining step-by-step. Step. She's also the host of the Be The Media. It's a video show on YouTube. Good. I'll put the link below so you can check it out after. And she has an amazing Facebook group we can add as well, where she helps uh, so generously to the community. And that's why I think that's one of your core skills and for being thank such you. a great community builder, Salma. So thank you for for being here. So let's try, jump right into the topic. YouTube, if I think about our audience, you know, listeners, our readers, they're all experts, they're leaders, they're working on content, they're doing podcasts, they're doing, and they might have a YouTube channel, but most of our listeners, they don't really know how to use it. So let's just talk about you know, I know that you have a core uh, framework, the three core, a framework with visibility, credibility, and profitability. Let's just jump right into the first question of why YouTube, sure. why now? Okay, excellent. So most people, when they think about YouTube, they think cat videos, entertainment shows, Oprah interviews, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff, which is great. And that is uh, one of the reasons why people go to YouTube, which is for entertainment. But there is an equally second part that is equally important. It drives a lot of traffic and a lot of people use YouTube for that other reason, which is to solve a problem. Yeah. Whenever they want to know how to do something, they want to learn how to do something, they want to understand new concepts, they want insight, knowledge, information, education. That is the second major, major use of YouTube as a platform. Right. And we as content creators, as entrepreneurs, as coaches, consultants, solopreneurs, why do we get why do we uh you know want to work with clients we want to solve their problems right we want to take them from where they are to where they want to be we want to help them along on that journey and that is exactly what you can do um on youtube so you can make videos that solve problems right so right. you can pick small small detailed problems make one video i like to say one video per problem so every single problem can have a small video that showcases how you can solve that problem so when you say why youtube and why now so the answer to why youtube is because it is the number one platform that people use to educate inform themselves and to go for looking expert advice for so that's one of the biggest reasons and why now because video is first of all it's always exploding but march 2020 saw an exponential rise in people consuming YouTube content, partly because of the pandemic and partly because everyone's working from home and yeah. the remote work trend and the work from home trend is just gaining, gaining in popularity right now, showing no signs of slowing down. The um, education industry, the online education industry, the online business industry are all growing. So this is really the time to capitalize on that growth. So that is the answer to why now. Amazing. That leads me to naturally to another question of if it's in the best platform to get on in terms of video, you now there there is a, literally people like everybody, even ourselves, we are going on YouTube to find the answer. To, we are looking for answers. We're looking at videos to kind of get education, information on specific questions. But on the other side, as a content creator or someone who is producing content for their business, 
there is the feeling of like not having the return on investment. I see that quite often with YouTube saying like, well, I'm doing videos, but no one is watching. So if we, yeah. we stay with the question of why video, why now, why is it so hard to see it for so many yeah. content creators? So this is part of my visibility framework. So yes. when I talk about how to get visible on the platform, there are three basic ingredients that go into getting views. Even if you're starting from scratch, if you're starting from zero, you've never like had a strategy before, you have no idea how to actually get views and subscribers. Um, and that strategy is a three part strategy for visibility. The first part of it is to niche down. The most common problem that people do is they start really broad and really vague. For example, if you're in the mindfulness niche and you start off with uh, making a video called um, how to be mindful every day, too broad, too vague, too much competition. You're just not going to get the views because you'll be competing with TED Talks and you know all sorts of like uh, mass media platforms at that point. Mm -hmm. So when you niche down into the specifics, okay, what kind of methods of mindfulness, what techniques, what strategies, what formulas, what frameworks, what steps can you teach inside that? Yeah. That is where you're going to be able to gain a foothold and you're going to be able to teach it in a way that is very, very specific, catered to a very specific audience. And this is where niching down is really, really important because YouTube follows the the algorithm of YouTube follows the audience. So if they've identified, okay, meditation or mindfulness for uh, single moms above 40, that's the audience, it's going to start to push your video out to just that audience that it has already determined because it has so much data on everybody and knows what, what videos we're watching and yeah. where we come from and what our demographics and psychographics are. So it will start to push your video out to that audience. You've got to get really clear on your topic. You've got to get really clear on your audience. So that's the first step. And yeah. the second thing is to understand where views come from. So views on YouTube come from two places. The first one is search because YouTube is the second largest search engine owned by Google, which is the first. So if you can rank in search, that is going to be a huge driver for your YouTube traffic, which is why I recommend making videos that solve problems because then you can keyword research those problems and then put that in your titles. Yes. So that is the other way of getting views. And finally, the third step in visibility is that YouTube has a very, very strong prediction engine. So I said earlier it was a search engine. It is also a prediction engine. It has a sidebar populated with videos that you want to watch next. And it serves up these videos based on your interests and your watch history. So if you are interested in, let's say, landing pages or development, it's going to show you all these different softwares, these techniques for building landing pages, free, paid, I mean, so many options, right? Yeah. Because it's identified, okay, this is something you're interested in. So what you want to do then is leverage these three things. Leverage uh, knowing your niche, leverage search engine optimization, and leverage how to show up next to related videos so you get on the sidebar. And those are the three main ways that you are going to get views to your YouTube channel, even if it's brand new. Amazing, Salma. And it's so related to how we approach content in our academy. It's always about, you know, thinking about what are you teaching? If you're an expert coach or, you know, if work, you train somehow, uh, you speak about this topic. When you work with your clients, when you work with your, you know, your team, whatever you're working with, you are solving problems with them. Take that same problem and put that on YouTube and take one problem exactly. And, and, and just do that. And some and small extra just to add to this is that we do is that when you finish up with your group coaching program or your coaching calls, sit down for half an hour and say, what can I use from this conversation and put that on YouTube? That could be a really yeah, great way to think. All the time. Yeah. Exactly. Because the best questions come from people who are already your clients. Exactly. And you know that they're targeted, you know they're relevant, and you know that you want more of those people to be attracted. So in fact, not even half an hour afterwards, I'm writing those questions down as they come during the coaching calls. I'm like, yeah. oh, hang on a sec. This, I need to write this down. This is going to be a future video. <laughs> exactly. So, I go through the Zoom funny. chat, you know, going through the Zoom chat and just take that Zoom chat sometimes and just go through it and look at the questions your clients are giving you because then you know you're really on point. This is exactly the question they are having. Another thing we could add to this is when you talk about, you know, uh, 
um, having this question answer is about keeping it just you mentioned that just keep it to one question, you know, uh, not going so broad and, and going deeper into one specific question. That's an, an amazing advice. Well, I think it's it's a good way to start, but then the question comes off, okay, I have a couple of videos. Is that really going to build my authority? Is that really going to help me something, you know, getting my brand out? I'm, I'm just thinking about the reflections of, you know, what I'm hearing so yeah. often about YouTube. Yeah. So let's just break those beliefs because I know it's not true. And I know there's so much potential for that. So how do you approach that authority building? Yeah, so trust is a funny thing, right? It takes a long time to build up and it can be destroyed in an instant, right? Absolutely. So um, one of the things that uh, draws me to the platform, even though people say, oh, well, we don't own the platform. Well, that's true. You don't own any social media. They say, oh, there's so many distractions on YouTube. Well, that's true of all social media. Again, right? There's distractions right. everywhere. You open your computer, there's distractions. Um, so the way that I like to think about authority building, trust building, is to, again, three things. Three things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first one is the best way to build authority is to show up consistently. So a lot of people say, okay, frequency versus consistency. How frequently should I be going uh, online? How frequently should I be creating content? And I say, you know what? Frequency is not as important as consistency is. Do what's mm -hmm. manageable for you, but keep it up long term. So whether that's once a day or once a week or once a month, whatever that consistency is that you can manage without burning out, without feeling overwhelmed. So that's the first building block in trust. Show up, serve your audience over and over and over again in a way that they expect it and they start to rely on you and they start to expect you to be there for them. You right. know, so that's really important. Um, the second thing is what we talked about earlier, uh, and we're going to take that a step further. Why did I say one video uh, per problem, right? The reason for that is you want to do what Netflix does, which is the Netflix effect, which is binge watch behavior. You, the oh. reason you want to do binge watch behavior is because you want people to watch one, two, three, five, ten, twenty 10, 20 videos of yours, because then they're going to start to see you as the expert. They're going to be like, okay, they're going to flip from t video to video to video to video, because as soon as they watch one video, they want more. They want, okay, yeah. well, I learned this, and now I want to learn something related to this. So if yeah. you are solving one small problem, but leading into the next problem, which the next video will solve, and then the next, and then the next. And YouTube really encourages that binge watching behavior with like using end cards and info cards and things like pop up on the screen where you can say, oh, watch this video next. And all they have to do is like click on the screen and they can go and watch that video. So yeah. it encourages binge watching behavior, which is great for building up authority because we know that, you know, it takes a while for people to trust us. And if they're watching three, 10, 15 videos in one sitting, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna yeah. build up trust faster. Yeah. Which brings me to my third point, in order to do all of this, in order to be consistent, and in order to have these bingeable videos, you need a content strategy. Yes. Right? Yes. So you need to be very, very uh, strategic and focused with how you want your brand to be perceived. What kind of you know content you're going to create, what kind of style, what kind of delivery, the look and feel of your set, your background, all of that is taken into consideration as you're building your brand strategy and your content strategy. So those are the elements that go into building trust and authority, and that leads to people perceiving you as the expert. Yes. And then you talked about, you know, building authority by, by sharing your knowledge. And where is the difference between giving away the farm and actually, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the, the, that's the something that... When it comes to content, like how much do I give away? Do I give away everything? Do I give away a bit? How do you go about that? So I'm of the opinion that you give um, strategically, but you give as much as you can. Yeah. Now, what happens is that here's where I draw the line between what to give for free and what to save for paid. Yeah. So I think that when you package a YouTube video, and when I say package, I'm talking about, okay, all the things that go into it, your design, your uh, thumbnail, your title, your content, all that goes into your packaging. 
And then when people are watching your video, there's repetition. So you introduce yourself every time. There's other things that you repeat. For example, asking people to like the video or subscribe to your channel. And then if you're monetized, you'll have ads coming on your channel. All these things are okay for a free program, right? Yeah. They will not be in your paid program. The other thing is you're not creating videos in a step-by-step -step format. You're not being yeah. like, okay, first do this and then do this. You're creating videos according to search volume, according to demand, according to questions coming in, according to frequently asked questions. So it's not step-by-step. -step. It's a little chaotic, right? It's based on what's trending right now, what to talk about right now, what are the hot topics, what are people asking in my industry. Yeah. So all of that stuff is fine to put in the free version on your YouTube channel because when yeah. they move over to your paid version, they have a system to follow inside. They know what to do first, what to do next, and then you're there to guide them if it's a coaching program or some kind of you know uh, uh, consulting program, right? And even if it's a course, it is still okay you take them from being at zero to 100 and you tell them exactly the steps they need to follow. No ads, no fluff, no distractions, and there's none of that happening. So you can actually take the exact same content that you've given out for free, but package it in a way that it makes sense for people to be able to um, implement it in a, in a, in a distraction-free way. So yeah. I would say, Put your free content out there. Don't be shy. Yeah, I agree with you. And I had a conversation actually the other day with uh, with one of our members. She was saying, but what if I give away this? This is really my my core of what I share. And I truly believe and I with you on this, you know, this idea of that. Well, actually, it's great because today in today's world, there's so much content out there that is not giving value. So when someone is watching some, you know, they go on YouTube, they go anywhere and they, they're looking for an answer, they're looking for a solution and you just tease them, but you don't really give it away. Well, they will come away from that feeling like, well, I didn't actually get an answer to my one question. However, if you answer that, they will start to see that well, you're a great coach, you're a great trainer, you can actually, you know what you're talking about. So you're building up that credibility for them to have a feeling how it would be to be part of your coaching program or would be to like how it would be feel to work with you because you know your topics. And I am 100% with you on that giveaway. It's not that you're giving away the implementation, the system, you're giving the knowledge on those topics and you're helping so many people. And when they are yeah. ready, when they need they will come even more to you because they, they see that, well, I understand the concept. Now I want to be able to be closer to Salma to be, get her support like and get that insights. Yeah. But I know that there is, I'm thinking about, uh, I think it's Amy Portifield that mentioned that when you give your content, it's almost like you want to train your audience. So when they come into your programs, they already seen it before a bit mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so they are not completely new to the concepts of that yeah and they can actually Absolutely. implement that i want to add to that once yeah it's you i mean you are like hitting the nail on the head with that one because yeah. a you said personalization which i'm a big believer on is uh the differentiating factor because when you're giving advice on a youtube channel you're doing one to many yes you're talking as one person to many people it's usually generic advice right? When they're inside your coaching program or whatever program that you're running, it is more personalized. So they're getting access to you and they're, they're completing that feedback loop. For example, yeah. I might make a video on how to design your YouTube channel header, right? I might say, do this, do this, do this. But when you're inside my program, I'll be able to complete that feedback loop, give you feedback on your design, help you make the tweaks and adjustments necessary and get you, uh, you know, have that implementation going on much faster and give you personalized advice on what works in your specific niche, in your uh, channel. Yeah. So that is really, really important. And so yeah. you can give all the generic advice you want, um, but it's the how and the implementation and the feedback loop that you save for your paid clients. Absolutely. And I love it. And so it's really, it's hard when you're starting off because you're feeling that like, well, this is all the work, it's my IP. And I talk yeah. with other community, our members, and I just want to repeat it as you're hearing. It's also from Salma that it's so important to show your knowledge and the more you give, the more you will get back because that's how you're going to stand out in your content. Not just giving away your one-on-one -on -one time, you're giving away 
information, not your implementation, not your systems, not the how to, yeah. not the feedback. That's what's yeah, going to be. You're giving away the- like the what and the why. Yeah. And then you can save the how for yeah. your program. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I have a very specific question that I would like to ask you in terms of, you know, there's a lot of repurposing going on from like going from live streams to to face from Facebook to, to let's say YouTube or podcast to YouTube. Do you think that uh, someone who's want to be successful with the YouTube strategy should have specific YouTube content created or is that another way to go? Yeah, uh, so I'm glad you asked that because when I talk about the three kinds of videos not to create on your YouTube channel, the first one is repurpose Facebook lives yeah. because they are not created for the YouTube platform or for the YouTube audience, they will not work, especially if you haven't edited them because nobody wants to sit through a chat sequence talking to random people and they don't feel like you're talking to them. They're going to bounce off your video right away. And when they bounce off your video, that sends a signal to the algorithm that people didn't like the first 30 seconds of your video. Don't show this video to more people. So it sends a negative signal right away. Other things I don't like to do is put, uh, you know, interviews, really, really long interviews as is um, when you're first starting out. Because people need to see you as the expert and interviews sometimes dilute that a little bit. They do position you as an expert, but not as effectively as if you were creating the videos and you were giving the value. So maybe pepper in some interviews, but that shouldn't be the only kind of videos on your channel. And then the third type are like sales uh, videos, which are just product related or just advertisements where you just talk about, hey, I've got this program, join now and that's it. Like only offers (laughs) on your channel and no real value. It's just not gonna work to grow either your channel or your audience or your business. So those are three kinds that I recommend not to start off with. That's great. That's a great advice. So if you are doing any type of repurposing, adding also more authority videos that shows your expertise specifically created for YouTube to kind of diversify that channel if you're thinking a long-term strategy. That sounds really good. It's also good advice for myself as I'm I'm, I'm asking you about it. Uh, YouTube is a a big goal for us as well in our academy. So we are growing uh, and learning with you at the same time with the listeners and readers video faqs are your best friend basically yeah. just every little question you get a short yeah. video for that that's yeah best that's friend. that's absolutely amazing let's talk about you mentioned that not doing sales videos and not doing pitching so the question yeah. here is how do you then use youtube to leverage your you know leads getting leads or yeah. getting potential clients from your youtube channel Well, I found that one of the best uses of YouTube is to drive traffic to your email list. And Mm -hmm. one of the biggest uh, mistakes that people make is that they'll direct under a video, they'll directly put in their Calendly link and be like, hey, get on a discovery call with me or, you know, straight away to their program. If you haven't built that level of trust yet and you're just starting out, it's a strategy that is going to be just not as effective, right? Right. And so the number one way that I like to use YouTube is to build my email list. And YouTube offers these uh, tools and places where you can put your link, unlike other platforms, for example, Instagram, so difficult to get more than one link to go to your, let's say you have five lead magnets, super difficult to do that, right? On YouTube, it's really, really easy. So what I like to do is one lead magnet per playlist. So if I have a video, so if I have a playlist on how to rank your videos on Google, so I'll have a lead magnet corresponding to video SEO. So every video that I make about rankings will have that lead magnet. And where will it, will this lead magnet go? It can go in the description section. So you can tell people go grab it from there. Anybody can do this. You don't need to have a very, you don't need to have like a, a monetized channel or anything for that. You can just put the link in the description and also say it at the end of your video that if you want to download this, you know, great freebie or whatever, then go and get it from the description. And if you are a monetized channel, you can actually use end cards on screen to put your lead magnets up on screen and people can click straight from the video itself. So those are two of the best ways to actually build your email list. So you want to have one lead magnet per playlist and then promote that particular lead magnet. The the reason I say one per playlist is because you don't wanna send all your traffic off of YouTube because 
YouTube's not going to promote your videos if all the traffic is suddenly going to go off the platform because they want to keep people on their platform. So when you have an entire playlist, let's say your playlist has 10 videos and somebody's already downloaded your freebie, they're going to just go on and watch the rest of your videos. So you get to keep most of the people on the platform and only the new people will go and download your playlist as your lead magnet. So you have, um, so you're serving both audiences. You're serving the YouTube algorithm, keeping people on the platform, building that trust and the bingeability, and you're also building your email list at the same time. That's, that makes so much sense. And I think that what I like about it is that you basically have a couple of opt-ins. You don't diversify the opt-ins too much. So you give a way to opt-in, but you also keep them engaged in a way that keep them on the platform. Absolutely amazing. And it's it's so much aligned with what we are teaching for when it comes to you know content strategy in general. It's having uh, for each pillar of in the framework, having a kind of an opt-in so people can opt-in into, into the video. So it yeah. can absolutely be repurposed to um, to YouTube, to the YouTube channel and what you're, you're teaching here. So I would like to ask you a bigger question because we spoke a bit about you know your three-step framework, the visibility, credibility, and profit ability and we touched upon the bigger picture but what I want to come back to is the patience you know I <laughs> patience is an important question because it's a long-term term strategy and content strategy is not something that you will see in one day what I usually teach is that it takes about 90 days to see a return on investment of what you're doing right now so if you're doing something right now you'll start to see some type of momentum if you're on the right track in 90 days. Is that the same for YouTube or would you say that it's a longer uh, time frame? Um, it totally depends on the kind of videos that you're creating. I mean, if I was a psychologist and I was dissecting Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah right now, I would, I would probably get a lot more views, right? Yeah. So if you're creating trending content and if you're creating videos that are hot topics, right now so yeah uh, you know let's say if you're based in the u.s and you and you're wondering what to do with your stimulus checks yeah hot topic right now you know yeah or like i just said um you know entertainment news such as what the royal family is up to or you know hot topics that are in your domain and you can sort of talk about them with expertise they will likely do well uh, earlier on, like right away. So I like to call these trending topics. So you yeah. have, um, the other kind of topics are the evergreen topics. Those are your pillar content topics. Those are your how to's. Those are your tutorials. Those are your core topics, right? They typically tend to do better over a longer time period. But what yeah. I've seen is that typically around the either the 30 or the 60 day mark, if a topic has got enough watch time on my channel, then YouTube suddenly picks it up and the graph goes, whew, yeah. you know. And um, what, what I like to say is that YouTube videos never depreciate over time. Mm. Everything in the world depreciates. Uh, <laughs> videos on Facebook, videos on Instagram, any other platform, LinkedIn, Twitter, your house depreciates, your car depreciates, everything depreciates over time. We, our bodies, we all depreciate. YouTube videos only appreciate over time. They only get better because they're yeah. there. They could suddenly get picked up by the algorithm. They could suddenly get ranked on Google. They could suddenly start to get views. Somebody could mention your video, a big brand could tweet out your video and suddenly you could start getting traction on it. Yeah. So leaving them on the platform is always a good idea because once yeah. you created that video, you could be benefiting from the rewards years later. I have videos yeah. that I created in 2016 that get me views, they get, they get me money, they get me subscribers today in 2021. Yeah. Amazing. So, you know, so YouTube videos, you can't go wrong. You put that video up, it's good value, yeah. and it's going to get you traction at some point in the future. And also what you said about, um, you know, how long. So it depends on how many evergreen videos you have and how many more hot topics and trending topics you have. So I like to do like 80% evergreen and then 20% jumping on trends, jumping on what's relevant today. So I kind of yeah. like to keep that balance. Sounds great. And and evergreen content is the content will take you away from that, you know, crazy content, uh, running faster to create more content, you know, you're yeah. getting on Instagram, <laughs> getting on stories. And it's so easy to get caught up in the content creation loop where you don't see a way out. It's like, I can not always take any holidays or I cannot step away for, for a week or a month because 
I'm stuck in this. And what evergreen content allows it to do is, you know, having YouTube channel is it's always there. And like you said, it's it's not going to, you know, go down in algorithm. It's just gonna be picked up. And if you're doing great yeah. content, <laughs> and if you have great quality content and you're focusing on value and you're focusing on providing more quantity so someone can pick it up. Um, I mean, is there is no no way not to win this youtube game (laughs) right (laughs) yeah absolutely oh i think that you're absolutely amazing salma you have been so generous with your your uh, help and there's so many nuggets for the ones listening and watching i absolutely uh, would advise all of you who are listening or watching take a notebook sit down and re-watch it from the best learnings this is more like a mini workshop sit down and just stop at each part and think what can I do in terms of my, my visibility? What can I do in terms of my credibility? What can I do in terms of my profitability? And take action. Everything Salma mentioned is super actionable. It's nothing that is, it's a no-brainer. Get into it, get the feeling for it, have a try with it. You are producing content, you have a message to share. And there is so much value in what we just shared right now. And especially Salma, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to add as a final, you know, inspiration or action you would like them to take? Yeah, let's let's do this with a quick example. Yeah. So I had a client um, in Australia and they made a video and they make something that's worth tens of thousands of dollars. And it's a special type of glass where you pass an electrical current and it goes from opaque to transparent and from transparent to opaque. And even though they didn't have a lot of views on their channel, they made that uh, they made those videos about how this glass works, and they got a few views. One of those views was a company in the U.S. who bought their product for ten thousand dollars. And the lesson from that is that it's not the quantity of views that you're looking for as an entrepreneur; it's the yeah. quality. Yes. One right person watching your videos who then goes on to buy something from you or your company, that's magic. And yes. that you can do, and that is totally doable for everyone. Absolutely. And that's the thing when it comes to working with premium clients, you know, if you're having a thought leadership practice, an expert practice, it's not, you don't need so many people. You're not into the masses. You're working with the right people, but getting in front of them, you know, when they are searching for that keyword, they're yeah. ready to learn about that. They are in that research phase of, I have a problem, I have a question, and I want a solution. And if you can show up and be the solution and show yeah. up with your expertise, your genius, your way of solving problems, it's it's perfect because then you just go right into being in their world and can take the conversation further. So absolutely, it's about- I the like cool. how you encapsulated yeah. that. That was very on point. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Amazing, Salma. For, so for the ones who are listening and watching, would like to go deeper with you. How, where can they find you and how can they discover your world? Yeah, sure. So the first place, uh, go and check out my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Salma Jafri. And then sign up. Um, I have a YouTube masterclass. You can get that from my website, selmajafri.com forward slash subscribe and watch that masterclass. It is for people who are just getting started and what to avoid and how to make the right kind of videos that will get you that visibility, credibility and profitability that you're looking for. Amazing. And we're going to put all the links in the descriptions below. And thank you. This has been such an honor. And thank you for being so generous with your time and your knowledge. For the ones who are watching and listening, make sure to subscribe and comment below. I would love to see your YouTube channel. So please comment below with your link. Put that in the description below so others can discover that. Because as we mentioned, my, sometimes it's just one person, the right person seeing what you're doing, subscribing, watching a couple of videos and reaching out. So take this opportunity to be a content, you know, dialogue with us and being in this interaction because it's all about being part of the experience and taking action. So that's about it. Thank you so much, Salma. And uh, I cannot wait to see where YouTube will take us this year. And with all this knowledge, I mean, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And you can hit me up anytime with whatever questions you have. And I'm, I'm happy to help. Oh, amazing. Thank you. And until next time, have a wonderful day.